The famous German poet, Wolfgang Goethe, apparently suffered from insomnia, and he thought that this might be linked to his coffee drinking habit. Well, one day in 1819, he happened to meet a chemist, Ferdinand Runge, who amused Goethe by showing him that he could dilate the pupil of the eye of a cat by putting in a bit of belladonna extract. Well, Goethe asked him whether or not he might be able to discover what it was in coffee that was keeping him awake. Within two years, he managed to do that. He found caffeine to be that ingredient. Well, it took about a hundred years until someone had the idea of removing the caffeine from the coffee uh, because there were people, of course, who were bothered by drinking too much coffee and not being able to fall asleep. And that was Ludwig Grosilius, a German coffee merchant who, according to the story, was stimulated by the fact that he thought his father had consumed a lot of coffee and was poisoned by it. How do you remove the caffeine? He hit upon a solvent, and that was benzene, because benzene was an excellent solvent for removing caffeine. Uh, it had been discovered in 1825 by the great English chemist uh, Michael Faraday, who had isolated it from the combustion residue of whale oil. In those days, whale oil was uh, used in lamps. This was you know, before electricity. So he had managed to isolate this substance, benzene, which was an excellent solvent. Well, Roselius apparently was not aware of the toxicity of benzene, even though at the time there already had been papers published about the toxicity of benzene and workers in the rubber industry who used it because it's an excellent solvent for, for rubber. Anyway, Roselius used it to extract caffeine from the coffee beans. That left a bit of residue of benzene, but he was not concerned uh, with this. Interestingly enough, during the rise of the Nazis, uh, decaffeinated coffee became a very, very popular item. Uh, the Nazis were into healthy living, and they thought that tobacco, alcohol, and caffeine were poisons. So the Nazi leaders uh, suggested that people drink decaffeinated coffee, of course totally unaware that the benzene residue in there would be a problem. Well, today, of course, we know that benzene is an issue, and uh, it is no longer used in the decaffeination process. Uh, other solvents are used. Ethyl acetate is the one that is used, and very often it is promoted as a natural solvent. Why? Because ethyl acetate is found in small amounts in apples and bananas. Of course, when it is used in industry, it's not extracted from apples. It's made in the factories on a large scale. It is synthetic. Not that that really matters, because there is really no residue of the ethyl acetate that is left behind after uh, the coffee has been heated in the final uh, uh, processing. Well, today, of course, benzene is no longer used in any food item, but it is still one of the world's most important industrial chemicals because it is used in the manufacture of rubber. It is used in the making of nylon, various other plastics like polystyrene. It is used in the making of explosives, of dyes, of pharmaceuticals. So it is tremendously important. These days it is distilled from petroleum. Well, it was in the 1860s that the molecular structure of benzene was determined. And therein lies an interesting story. August Kekulé was the German chemist who determined that. Apparently, he had a dream, and the dream was about the snake biting its own tail. So he concluded that the six carbon atoms that were present in benzene, they knew that benzene had a formula of C6H6, he concluded that the six atoms would be joined together in a ring from the dream of a snake biting his tail, and indeed it was correct. As I said today, benzene is used in all kinds of things. It is used to make polystyrene, which is exactly the plastic that this is made of. It is also used to make dyes, and I suspect the black dye here is also made from benzene. This is polystyrene. Polystyrene is made from benzene, but there isn't any residual benzene in here, so I don't have to worry about any of that leaching into my decaffeinated coffee. So there is the story. The history of decaffeinated coffee has come a long way since uh, uh, Roselius first suggested the use of benzene. Today, it's ethyl acetate or supercritical uh, carbon dioxide, which is uh, also used. And uh, Goethe today uh, would uh, certainly be surprised to find out that it is possible to have safe decaffeinated coffee.